daddy could have known Adam for 56 years. So you get not only a much greater starting, uh, a much higher starting point, they already knew a lot because God pre-programmed it into Adam, plus they lived a long time and could learn a lot more, plus they lived long enough to pass this on to many generations. Today an awful lot of knowledge goes to the grave. You know, about the time you know it all, you're, you die. Uh, or you, by the time you know a bunch of stuff, you die. Imagine if guys like Einstein could live, you know, f eight or nine hundred years. How much could they, how much knowledge could they accumulate in a brain like that? So, I think before the flood they were much smarter, much smarter than we are today. And some of this knowledge uh, was passed down and as lifespans got shorter it began to be lost. And a lot of societies were arranged to try to, uh, secret societies to preserve this knowledge, you know, th uh, through different cultures and things like that. But they opened up a grave in South America. The grave was probably made about a thousand years ago uh, uh, and found a, this little uh, gold artifact in there. You can see it next to the dime for scale. Little uh, looks like an airplane about this big. The Smithsonian has it and they have it labeled as a stylized insect. Because they got this preconceived idea, ancient man was dumb, modern man is smart, they could not possibly have known about airplanes a thousand years ago. And yet, here they've got one. That's not a stylized insect. I'm sorry, they knew about flight. An Egyptian tomb was opened as 2100 years old and it also had an airplane in it, a little model glider. How did they know about airplanes over 2,000 years ago? This iron pot found in a lump of coal indicates a high level of technology before coal formed. I believe coal formed in the flood in the days of Noah, so an iron pot is not a problem. The Bible says Tubalcain was an artificer in brass and iron. Some of the walls that are found in Peru of these giant stone walls have these massive blocks of stone that are cut and they fit together perfectly. One of the stones in one of these walls weighs 20,000 tons. Well, the biggest crane on earth today <coughs> can only lift 3,000 tons. How on earth were they lifting a stone 20,000 tons? We simply don't know how they did it. Actually, in the book uh, Secret of the Lost Races, the author said, what's truly impossible about the block is that it's the size of a five-story house and weighs an estimated 20,000 tons. He said, we have no combination of machinery today that could dislodge such a weight, let alone move it any distance. It shows their mastery of a technology that we, as yet, have not attained. Somebody in the past knew something we can't even do today, and I think that's the case with a lot of things. This brass uh, bell type thing was found inside a lump of coal. Mr. Newton Anderson has it sitting on his desk. I've talked to him many times about it. I think you ought to donate it to our museum here, Mr. Anderson. We'd keep it safe for you, I'm sure. But if kids could come by and see it here, we'd love to have that. By the way, if you have any artifacts for our museum, we'd, we'd love to get anything. We want to influence people for the Lord. So if it's sitting in your closet gathering dust, you can put it on a loan or give it to us or we'll buy it off you if we can afford it. So that's the kind of things we have here. We want to get the gospel out. This uh, vase found in solid rock, supposed to be 600,000 years old. Ancient man was 600 million years old. Ancient man was not primitive. They found a sunken ship in the Aegean Sea, which is near Greece in the Mediterranean. And there was uh, encrusted on there what appeared to be an analog computing device. The more they analyze this thing, it's now in the National Science Foundation uh, Museum, I believe, in, uh, I don't remember where that one's at, but I read about it a little bit. This uh, com looks like an analog computer. This is uh, 2,100 years ago. This hammer was found in uh, rock supposed to be 400 million years old by a lady in Texas. Battelle Laboratory said it's 96.6% iron, 2.6% chlorine, 0.74% sulfur. No carbon. And yet it is stainless steel. It won't, it won't rot. It won't rust. Carl Baugh's got it in his museum down in Glen Rose, Texas. Apparently they knew about electricity a long time ago because this battery uh, was found in Iraq from about uh, 2,000 years ago. The Egyptians must have known about electricity. This hieroglyphic shows what appears to be wires and a generator or something hooked up to these uh, two snakes. Either the snakes are producing the electricity or they're putting the electricity into the snakes, I don't know, but they must have known about uh, electricity a long time ago. They certainly knew about tampering with the skull, about brain surgery. Some of the skulls are found with holes that actually healed up. They did brain surgery and the people lived. One of the Ica stones from Peru shows a man doing brain surgery. There are only about 25 of these stones in America. We have three here in our museum. This is one of the actual Ica stones from Peru showing a man and dinosaur together. 
Some of the stones show uh, amputations, uh, people's legs being amputated and artificial limbs being attached. They show heart surgery. Here are some of the tools that they use for the surgery, for the brain surgery. Uh, Dennis Swift has spent a fortune and a lot of time studying all about the uh, Ica stones. They knew about reshaping the skulls. Here are some strange shaped skulls that they used uh, to, for whatever reason, they would uh, shape the skulls. Ancient man was not primitive. He knew an awful lot, probably more than we do today in many areas. Here's a stone from Ica, Peru, showing what appears to be heart surgery. They're taking the person's heart out. Now, whether that's the soul leaving and the guy died, or I don't know, but they, did, they knew about open heart. Here's one showing an artificial limb, thus amputation. This little thing appears to be designed to be a steam engine. Dennis Swift has a lot of information about that. They knew about the wheel a long time ago. This is from the Ica civilization, many, many thousand, several thousand years ago. This little spider in real life is only an eighth of an inch long, but this is one of the drawings called the Nazca lines. Notice the leg on the right, the bottom right, has one leg that's much longer than the rest. It looks like, oops, they made a mistake. It was just discovered recently that this little tiny spider, which you cannot see without a magnifying glass, during mating season, just for a few seconds, that leg grows longer it mates off the, the sperm and eggs are on the tip of that leg, and then the leg shrinks back in. How could they have known that without magnification? These uh, metallic spheres found in South Africa have parallel lines going around them, obviously man-made, and yet they're in rocks supposed to be pre-Cambrian. The textbook said it's 2.8 billion years old. <laughs> well, that's baloney. We'll have a whole bunch about this on our website. You can get it from Michael Cremo's books. And of course, he believes it's 2.8 billion. He's wrong about that, but he's right. It's a man-made artifact. Um, <clears throat> this mortar and pestle were found underneath deposits of rock supposed to be three, 33 to 55 million years old under Table Mountain in California. These uh, little, what they're called nano artifacts were found, extremely tiny little uh, coils, some down to one ten thousandth of an inch. How did they carve something like that? How did they make something? How could they see something like that? <clears throat> I suspect they had much better vision, down to extremely uh, fine vision, to be able to see real tiny things, or they certainly knew about magnification techniques. These nano artifacts follow what's called the golden mean ratio. We're going to do a whole videotape on the golden mean ratio. That is absolutely amazing how that the Greeks discovered that, that the thing that's pleasing to the eye is rectangles that are 1 to 1.61 in ratio. That's what the pentagram is all about. And Donald Duck and Mickey Mouse did a cartoon, or Walt Disney did a cartoon about the golden mean ratio called Mathmagic Land, I think is the name of it. That's amazing, showing how the golden mean ratio is found in all sorts of things. It's found in the uh, chambered nautilus. The way that it grows, the length to width of the chambered nautilus follows the golden mean ratio. If you take one and cut it in half, I've got uh, one here, you can see the chambers inside, as it grows, the, the ram's horn does the same thing. A sunflower does the same thing. Even the, the scales on a pine cone follow the golden mean ratio. We'll do a whole videotape on that someday. That's amazing. Okay, next topic. What about the Great Pyramid? The Great Pyramid is amazing. It is the largest building by far on the surface of the planet. Nobody knows for sure when it was built. There's a lot of theories about it. It's uh, much larger in volume than the Sears Tower. There are four theories about the Great Pyramid. Two theories say it's built before the Flood. Two theories say it's built after the Flood. And then they divide up into two theories say it's built by heathen people. It's just a heathen structure. No big deal. Other people think, no, it's a godly structure and it has symbolism in there for Christianity or for at least for the Lord. I don't know. It doesn't matter to me. I'll just show you the four theories with you. The Great Pyramid is a massive building. It is built in Egypt. It may be a fulfillment of this prophecy in Isaiah chapter 19. It says, In that day there would be an altar to the Lord in the midst of the land of Egypt, and a pillar at the border thereof. And it shall be a sign and a witness for the Lord.